Greetings, and welcome to another AG2 production. My name is Chief Warrant Officer 3, Jordan Murphy. The topic of this video is exporting and performing simple data analysis from information in a SharePoint list. The purpose of this video is to provide the viewer with the skills necessary to export data from a SharePoint list and perform simple data analysis in Excel. The target audience of this video is the SharePoint and Excel beginner. This video was created using SharePoint 2010 and Excel 2013. In order to complete the steps in this video, you must have both programs installed on your computer. Prior to completing the steps in this video, it is recommended that you view the other SharePoint how-tos on EGTube, as I will be exporting data from an existing list in order to perform the simple analysis. This video is part of a multi-part series on suspense tracking. This video will cover the export and analysis of data from the suspense tracker previously created. The next video will explain how to create a custom view of your data on SharePoint to show only the content you wish to view. Upon completion of this video, the viewer should have a higher level of confidence in exporting data from SharePoint and performing simple analysis of that data in Excel. It is not intended to be all-inclusive of the options available when exporting and analyzing data. Let's begin. So first, navigate to your SharePoint site. Click on Lists or All Site Content. Locate the list that contains the data you wish to export. After the list loads, click on List Tools, then click on List, click on Export to Excel. A now a series of pop-up warnings may appear depending on your server configuration, so you just go ahead and click on whichever acknowledgement will allow you to proceed. So I'm going to click on OK. And then I'm going to click on open. Down here you'll see it says, do you want to open or save owssvr.iqy from your site name? Go ahead and click on open. And it's going to open the data and you'll get a security warning that pops up. And it'll ask you where you want to put it. And you'll, you'll want to put it in a new workbook. Now for brevity purposes, I've already downloaded my data. So what you want to do here is when your data first opens, I'll show you the sheet that opened up on mine. So you'll see that this is called OWSSVR. What you want to do is right click, choose rename, and rename it to Suspense Data. And then hit enter. Now what you'll need to do is create a new worksheet to analyze your data. So what you want to do is click on the plus sign next to your Suspense Data tab. Just go ahead and click on the plus sign, create a new tab, and call it Suspense Stats. As you can see, I've already done that here. So now just follow along with me. What you want to do here, in this row, starting in column B, what you want to do is come over to your Suspense Data tab and locate your columns that start with your business unit or organization names. So mine starts in column F and goes over all the way to column L. So what you want to do is copy this so you can use either control C for copy or you can choose right click copy. Come back on your suspense stats tab, go to column B and highlight as many cells as you need. Go ahead and paste that data right in here. So now what you want to do is come over here under column B, correction, come over here, column A, and you're going to want to list all of the different statuses that are in your suspense tracker you previously created. So right here, these are all the statuses from the choice fields that I have when you're on the suspense tracker on SharePoint for these different columns for business unit one, two, three, and your different operating units. So in those choice fields, these are the actual choices that are in those drop down lists on here. So what you want to do is after you copy and paste your business unit names across here from column B and over, and then column A and the next row down, you want to type in all of your different statuses that you could possibly have. So I've already typed those in. 
So once you complete that, come over here to the first cell under your first business unit next to your first status. So in my case, it's business unit one in progress. And now you want to type in the following formula on the screen. It's going to say equals count if, and then open parentheses, suspense data, column F. So if you look over here, suspense data, column F, this is going to be all the values for business unit one. So suspense data, column F, and then a comma, then one double quote, and then you want to type in the value that you're looking for that you want to match or count for here. So this one here is in progress. So I just took this from the status. So what I'm saying here is I want to count all of the items from this sheet, this column, column F, that are equal to in progress. As you can see, it comes up to 19. Now what you want to do is in this column here, you'll highlight the cell and you'll get this green box at the corner here. You want to move your mouse cursor over so that it turns into what looks like a black plus sign. Click on it and drag down all the way to the bottom and that's going to copy the formula all the way down. But what it's going to do is when you come to each additional field here, so I'll show you what's going to happen then I'll undo on mine. So you can see that it's going to count it all, but as you come in here you'll see that it's looking for in progress. So what you want to do for each row here in your account if statement you need to change this value right here where it says in progress you need to change this to not started and a past due for each of these so as you can see they're all in progress so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and undo so I get back to my regular values here from this point after you've made sure that all of your count if statements under your first business unit are correct. You can do that by just highlighting the cells and ensuring that the value here is the same in the for the value that you're looking for in the next cell. Once you've ensured that all of your values are, the, are correct based on your statuses, what you're then going to do is highlight all of these cells under business unit one. You'll again get a cursor right here or a green box at the bottom of this selected thing so it's a little a bolder green square position your cursor so that it again looks like a black plus sign click and hold with your left mouse button and then drag it all the way over to the end of where your business and operating units are and what that's going to do is it's going to copy the formula into each of these cells and you can verify sporadically okay column suspense data column i so column i for suspense data should be my finance column. So I'm going to come over here, finance is column I, come back over here, human resources says column J, I'm just going to double check, column J is human resources. So we verified that these are all correct. So once we verified that all of these are correct, what we're going to do now is just create a simple two-dimensional column chart. As you can see, I've already completed uh, completed that step right here. So I'm just going to walk you through the steps for that right now. So what we're going to do in order to create this column chart is we're going to highlight this entire matrix here of business and operating units and different statuses. So we're going to highlight here, come up here to our top menu where it says insert, click on insert. We're going to come over here to this icon which is a column chart. We're going to select a 2D column chart. As you can see, with most of the charts in Excel, as soon as you mouse over it when you have data selected, it's going to give you a sample of what the chart will look like below. So I'm going to go ahead and click on here anyway and create this chart again just so you can see how that process works. So all you do is select your data. Let me delete this out of here. You're going to select your data up here and you're going to click Insert choose your column chart, click the drop down, choose 2D column chart for clustered column, and this gives you a preview right below that of what this is going to look like. So choose the 2D clustered column, click on it, and it'll build your chart. And this is what it looks like on here. So now what we want to do is we want to filter out all of these NA values because they're not applicable to the completion status. So go ahead and click on your chart and you'll see this filter icon over here. Go ahead and click on the filter icon, scroll down under categories, and unselect NA. 
Once you do that, the NAs will disappear. So I'm going to add mine back on, hit apply, and you can see NA pops back up. But we don't want to see things that are non-applicable. So I'm going to come back over here under this filter, categories, uncheck NA, then click apply, and you'll see that it comes right off of the chart. So that's all you need to do to create a basic analysis chart of here to see by business unit where they stand in comparison to each other with completion status. Now up here is your chart title. If you click on this, you'll see you can highlight this and change this to whatever you want. So whatever you want to name your chart, you can just click up in here and then highlight the text and change it. So this is just one of many methods of analyzing your data. You'll find that your organization may have specific needs for its analysis. So you'll be able to change this and do more specific analysis to meet the needs of your organization. Once you have this complete, you're going to want to go ahead and do a file, save as, and save the file with whatever file name and whatever file location works best for your organization. Once you complete that, you need to ensure that the data will update. So what we have here under the suspense data, this is just a current picture of the data. It doesn't automatically refresh when SharePoint is updated, nor does this data update SharePoint. So if you change this, it's not going to change your SharePoint. So the con connection between SharePoint and Excel, the Excel is a read-only, meaning it can only pull data from SharePoint. It doesn't push data back to SharePoint. So in order to ensure that we have the most current data always on our worksheet, what you must do is come up here to the data tab, click on data, click connections, then click on properties. And you'll see over here where it says OWS SVR. That's the name of the connection you want to update. So click properties. Then on the usage tab, click on enable background refresh, refresh data when opening file, then click OK. So now anytime you open this file, whether it's on your server or located elsewhere, it's going to go back out to your SharePoint server and it may require you to reconnect to the SharePoint server. If you have CAC authentication on your server, you'll have to go and authenticate back to that server. So again, once you select it, click properties under usage, enable background refresh, refresh on connection on refresh all and click OK hit close. Now if you're in the middle of using this file and you know that other people are updating it, at any time you can come to the data tab and click on refresh all and it's going to pull that, you can see the cursor turned into a spinning wheel here. So what it's doing now is it's going back out to SharePoint and it's refreshing it with the most current data that is on your SharePoint server. So that's all uh, for this lesson you just created and exported and perform simple analysis on data from your SharePoint list. You now have a foundation file in which you can perform additional or more complex analysis on your data as it suits your business's needs. Once again, thank you for turning into AGTube.